Good morning, everybody. Dr. Price here. Um, so today's uh, today's subject is one that I get questions about this all the time, and I had a question about it last night, so I wanted to go over it with you guys. Um, patients are always asking me, "Is it okay to pop my own back and my own neck? Um, you know, or is it okay to have somebody pop like your middle back? People pick you up, and you get that popping sound." or walking on your back or different things like that. Well, what I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about when it's okay, when it's not okay, and the possibility of injury. Um, the low back is one thing. Um, if you are doing a stretch, let's say for example, a yoga stretch where you're um, sitting on the floor, see if I can get on camera. Basically, nap is too far back. But anyway, you're sitting on the floor with your, with your legs crossed and you kinda of do a real slow twist like this. Like I just did that and I got some, some popping in my back. If you're doing a real slow, slow twist like that, a real slow stretch, and you end up getting a little bit of a popping sound, that's okay. That's your body, you know, kind of aligning itself and kind of, you know, relieving the pressure. And you're you're doing very gentle. You're giving the body the chance to do what it wants to do. Now, if you do that and you jerk yourself to try to get it to twist, um, it's a little bit more dangerous. Uh, you know, the, the the possibility of an injury with that in the low back is that you may end up moving some of the segments that are not out of place, out of place. Now when you're doing that stretch, you don't actually correct the problem in your back. Um, what happens is you have, you'll have a, a bone, I'll do it this way so you can see, a bone, a bone, and a bone. If this joint is the one that's locked out of place, then this one and this one are gonna become what they call hypermobile to make up for that, um, that joint being locked out of place, to make up for that motion. So a lot of times when you're doing that stretch and you get that popping noise, you're moving the ones that are hypermobile and um, you're relieving that joint pressure, all the, the gases that trap in the uh, joint capsule. So that's why it feels better, but you're not actually correcting the problem because you'll notice if you do that, a couple hours, you're ready to do it again. You'll feel like that's, that, that uh, pressure is back again. And that's because that joint that the problem, that that's the problem has not been corrected. So slow stretches like that in the low back, those are okay. The popping is okay as long as it doesn't hurt, but don't jerk yourself quickly. And um, you know, just keep in mind that if you do jerk yourself quickly, you, tend, you run the risk of moving more joints out of place, which could cause the problem to get worse. Now the mid back is a little bit of a different story. The mid back, you have the ribs. This is the mid back, this area right in here. So it's the area between the shoulder blades. Um, you have the ribs that come in and they kind of stabilize the joint a little bit. So um, if you'll notice when you're in the office and we're doing adjustments, uh, we try to get specific joints um, with the adjustment, but a lot of times it'll bring a couple with it. So if I do a, a, an adjustment into your mid-back, you'll feel a popping in three or four joints. Um, again, we're trying for one. We make sure we get that one, but sometimes it'll bring a couple with it. Um, what people tend to do uh, when they're trying to adjust themselves is have somebody walk on their back or somebody else push on their back or you know another one is you cross your arms and somebody walks up behind you and picks you up and that popping sensation um, you know is that okay yeah, it might feel better but it's not again it's not fixing anything it's just uh, popping the joints around the one that's the main problem the challenge again with this especially in the mid back because of the pressure that it takes to do that you have the risk of possibly broken ribs I have a, a friend that um, uh, runs a pet store that actually broke a rib her friend picked her up and was swinging her around and you know ended up breaking a rib. Um, you also have the, the possibility of moving joints out of place that, that shouldn't go out of place. So um, not a good idea. If you feel like that back needs to be popped, you know, get in here, let us straighten you out and, um, and get that sensation to go away the right way. Now the neck is a completely different story. Um, some of you pop your neck just by doing, you know, little motions like that. Some of you pop your neck by doing this kind of crazy stuff, okay? If you're not using your hands, if you're just doing, you know, just normal range of motion and you feel some popping, that's less dangerous than if you're getting in there and moving it. But you really, really should try your hardest to never ever pop your own neck. And I say pop because you're not adjusting your neck, you're doing a pop. We, when we get in there, we're doing a specific adjustment as chiropractors. But you yourself are just popping your neck. The risk with this, with popping your neck, and this is very important that you understand, it's very important that you tell anybody who you see popping their own neck. If you can see here, these are the neck vertebrae, okay? Inside those neck vertebrae, you can actually see this red thing running through. That's an artery. That artery actually supplies this blood supply. And what sits right here is your brain, okay? This is very important, follow me. So when you twist and contort your own neck, if you don't do it right, you can cause 
this is a kind of a layman's term way of explaining this, but you can cause a trauma to that artery or a, a nick, I guess you could say, or some kind of a, a lesion in that artery. And the body's mechanism for healing that is it forms a clot to protect that artery. Once that clot is formed, if you go in there and do that again, you stand the chance of dislodging that clot and it going up into the brain. Now, what is it called when a clot goes into the brain? It's called a stroke. So you don't want to put yourself at risk of stroking yourself out with an incorrect adjustment. Um, just to tell you, and I don't say this to scare you, and chiropractically when we adjust, we make sure you're in the right position and we do the adjustment very, very specifically to make sure that we're not going to have a risk of that injury. In fact, the risk of a stroke, despite what you might hear in the media, the risk of a stroke from a cervical adjustment is very, very, very minimal. Very minimal. Um, but, uh, you know, just to give you an example, some people have strokes just turning their head to look behind them when they're backing out of the driveway. Um, hairdressers, when you lay down and you put your hair in the sink, having your head in that extended position can sometimes cause a problem. So you're, you're, you're not extremely susceptible to this. Again, I'm not trying to scare you, but you got to be cautious with this. So it is never a good idea to pop your own neck, uh, especially if you're a female over the age of 35 and you smoke and you're on birth control, you are at a very, very high risk of having that potential. Um, so. Keep these things in mind. I know it feels good to pop your own spine, but you always stand the chance of causing um, further injury that could lead to further problems. The best thing is to always come in and get it adjusted specifically, um, you know, to what your body needs. So I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, please, uh, you know, leave me an email or send me an email at drpricedc at aol.com or you can post a comment on this on this blog. Um, you know, again, my hope for you is this. If we work on ourselves, um, you know, more than anything else, then we can pretty much do anything that we want to do. So take control of your health before it controls you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.